We're here at Google in New York City to talk all about Google's brand new AI-powered Notebook LM. Justin, thanks a lot for having us here. It's awesome to be here with you at Google. Tell us what Notebook LM is all about and how does it actually work? Yeah, thanks for having us and excited to tell you about Notebook LM. Notebook LM thrives in making sense of a variety of different source information. So at work here at Google, I like to upload different documents related to blog posts or maybe meeting notes and then try to figure out the connections between the two and have it create messaging or an FAQ or action items, things like that. We've also seen a ton of different fun use cases within the community. So last uh, September, we uh, announced something called Audio Overview. And that is a way to turn your source information into an engaging AI discussion. And there's a lot of practical use cases there, but we've also seen a lot of people utilize it for fun stuff. They'll upload their resume and have the AI generated host talk about how professional, how impressive their professional background is, or upload your bank statement, and then uh, Notebook LM will talk about how great of a spender they are, things like that. <laughs> but again, it's just the perfect way to take to together a ton of different source information and explore it and make sense of it and look at the inline citation so that you know where that information is coming from in your source documents. I feel like whenever I need a, a confidence boost, I might put in some things about myself, just let the AI host take it away. I do that Get all the some time. Self Affirmations for the morning. Get you stoked up. Yep. Uh, I, talk to me more about the idea of intentionally choosing the sources that go in. I feel for me personally, and I think a lot of other people, one of those pain points for a lot of the AI models out there, you just don't always know where that source of information is coming from. And then, of course, you invariably, you got to double check. You got to triple check the material that's coming out to make sure it's accurate. So why is that active component of putting in those sources so important to the process. Yeah, absolutely. So Notebook LM, again, is grounded in the source information that you give it. So if you can see on the screen here, we asked it to come up with key themes from interview transcripts from users to this fake company that we made up called Smarter Compost. And now here, it's gonna show you what the outcome is. So we asked for key themes, it likes the ease of use, but there's mixed feelings about the app experience. Okay, well, where did that information come from? So if you look in the source material here, it'll give you the inline citation. So Sarah, from the interview transcript that we were discussing over here in the source material, thinks that the app is really helpful. It's great to know about the composting is progressing and get reminders about when I need to add water or turn the bin. So again, you don't have to wonder, mm, is that validated? Does the AI system make that up? Well, you know where it's coming from within the source material, and that is a key differentiator for Notebook LM. I can imagine this being of incredible importance to researchers, people who work in academia, who are dealing with a ton of very dense, difficult information and maybe need that digested into a short amount of time. What are some other use cases you think that you and the t uh, team here at Google are really envisioning for Notebook LM? Yeah, so for education, that's a big use case for us. So we're allowing these students to just become an expert in the topics that they have here. So now if we go back to the other document about the shared notebook about Dinosaurs, so say you are in college, you're in Dinosaur 101, okay, and you've got a bunch of different materials that you're trying to make sense of before you have a test coming up. You've got a PDF, you've got a couple websites, you've got a Wikipedia page, and man, you gotta figure out how to test yourself for this. Well, you can just click one click over here and it'll generate a study guide for you. Now it's gonna come up with sample questions and it's gonna be able to help you get up to speed in a situation like that. But it's up to your imagination as well. We have a few quick buttons here that you can click with an FAQ or a study guide or a briefing doc or a timeline. But also you can chat, ask the chat to basically do whatever you want. So let's just say, okay, how is the definition of dinosauria encompass the vast diversity observed in fossil records? Okay, and now it's going to surface that information and again, give you those inline citations. Now, that is really helpful to make sense of all of these different things, rather than having to synthesize that information source by source, it can bring it together and allow you to understand it a little bit easier. I gotta say, I've learned far more about dinosaurs so far since doing this interview than I have since third grade, so I'm really grateful for that. I know, I wanna, I feel like we don't learn, we learned about dinosaurs a lot growing up and now we don't get to talk about them anymore, but it's still exciting. I know, well now I get to use them for this interview. <laughs> yeah. uh, talk to me about the discover button feature because as great as it is to have control over your sources, maybe sometimes, hey, you, you do wanna trust the Notebook LM to be able to find those sources. So what has that rollout looked like? Yep, so that we just launched that last week and this is a new Discover Sources feature. So you can now pull in sources from the web on a specific topic. So let's keep with the dinosaur theme here. So tell me about, 
So we want to know a little bit more about dinosaur fossils. So I'm going to submit that, and it's going to bring up some trusted material from the open web. I can then review that material and then see if I actually want to bring it in to my notebook. So there is a source here from the Natural History Museum about how dinosaur fossils are formed. There's even a YouTube link in there. Okay, a lot of good information about how dinosaur fossils are formed. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to import it into my notebook. And now this is included in my notebook. I can explore that information. And you have just another form of bringing in source material through the Discover Sources feature, which we just launched. What are some of the cool features that maybe people who have even played around with Notebook LM have maybe not yet quite discovered? Yeah, so there's going to be two things. I think one of the kind of lesser known ones is mind maps, and we released that a few weeks ago. And that is a visual connection sort of guide that can outline different connections within your material. So we've got dinosaurs here, and then all of these different topics related to the information in your notebook. So let's dive into a little bit more around the origin of birds. Okay, let's talk about some of the feathers and the evidence there. So now it's gonna bring me back to my chat interface, and it's gonna show me information from the source material about evidence of feathers and why and how they've been discovered in fossils. So again, some people are more visual learners. They wanna see how these things are laid out. They wanna see it in more of, a, more of a visual way, and that's incredibly helpful. I think beyond that, probably the most viral feature, again, is our audio overview feature. And so it can turn information into source material, sorry, it can turn your source material into an AI-generated engaging discussion. So now I made one specifically about Notebook LM. So maybe let's hear what the hosts have to say about Notebook LM. Hey everyone, welcome back. We all know that feeling, right? You need to get up to speed on something fast, but you don't want to drown in information overload. Well, that's exactly why we're here today diving deep into Google's Notebook LM. We want to give you a clear... Cons okay, but sometimes maybe the hosts aren't going in the exact direction that you want them to go in. Well, you can interact with them through interactive mode. The ability to customize how the AI... Oh, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, I'm actually live on Cheddar TV right now, and we're trying to understand how Notebook LM can be used in a business or an educational setting. Can you help with that? Yes, hello again. It's great to have you with us live on Cheddar. We were just highlighting some of those very points. Absolutely. For educational settings, think about students using it to create study guides from their notes and slides. Or even generating glossaries of key terms from dense scientific articles. And for businesses, it can act as a central hub for all project-related information. Imagine quickly accessing key insights. From you don't even have to ask, ask me questions anymore. We can just ask the, up, the, the model and you can just go from there. I was just thinking it might be the future of interviews here. I'm just Could asking be. these things. I know, but it's much better to have, uh, have do this interview with you, of course, to show us all the bells and whistles. Uh, oftentimes when I'm researching, I feel like I'm a man on a mission. I know what I want to learn. I know the sources that I want. But every once in a while, I like to stumbling down random rabbit holes. Mm -hmm. What is the I'm feeling curious component of all this look like in case there's something cool that I may not yet know I want to learn that actually I do really want to learn. I'm glad you asked. Yeah, this is another feature that we just launched recently. And if you go into a new notebook, this is what the user interface looks like when you're creating a new notebook. Now we're going to click the Discover Sources button. And again, maybe you don't know what you're interested in. Let's say I'm feeling curious. You can click that button and it's going to curate a random selection of random sources on a specific topic. You don't know what that topic is, but let's see what it's looking like. Okay, wow, this is about distributing music over telephone lines early on. Let's see if this will populate here. Okay, here we go. So this is about, this is a topic I know nothing about. Apparently they were sending music down telephone lines in 1876. So let's look at one of these sources. Always good to look at the sources. Okay, that looks like a pretty good article. What about this one too? Oh yeah, that looks dense. I don't... Ooh, this looks great. Look at all these cool visuals and stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in those two top, oh, those two source materials into my notebook. And now we can then learn about how early telephone-based music distribution systems worked. So now I can just ask the chat. It's gonna develop some material. So, okay, this was in the early 1900s. Subscription and equipment, requesting music, and again, pulling over the inline citations, we can see where in the source material it was pulling that information from. You know what, I like this information. I'm gonna to wanna to refer back to it later. I'm gonna click save to note, and then it's gonna be over here so I can refer back to it at a specific point in time. 
That's great, because at some point, this is going to be a killer Jeopardy category for me, this one specifically, and now I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah, this is pretty niche. This is good. That's awesome. Uh, finally, talk to me about uh, Chatter, about getting this out in an app, and how do people actually access it now, and, and what does the Google team hope in terms of being able to even expand access even more for Notebook LM? Yeah, that's a great question. So yeah, right now, we're just web-based at notebooklm.google.com. Anybody can use it. It's free. Go check it out. And yes, the team is working on a mobile application. I don't have anything to share about timeline just now, but people have requested it. We are working on it, and that'll be a great way to consume information on the go and utilize your sources when you're more of a, in, in more of a mobile setting. It, it is an absolutely awesome product, uh, especially as a journalist and a researcher the way that I am. I've already found a ton of great uses for it. I'll continue to use it. I'm sure a lot of our viewers will as well. Thanks for having us and showing it off to us. Thanks so much.